Jupiter orbit insertion is probably one of the most important things in the entire mission, and it's because that changes us from being in orbit around the sun to being captured in orbit around Jupiter. And if you're not in orbit around Jupiter, you can't do the science we want to do. The major science objectives of Juno are one, to understand how Jupiter formed and what is it made out of. We want the recipe of solar systems and we're at the ingredient list level. So we're gathering the ingredient list and understanding how Jupiter is structured. So the most important objectives are understanding Jupiter's formation and how that relates to the formation of other planets including us. How does its polar magnetosphere work? What's driving those incredible aurora? How deep are the zones and belts? And what are the dynamics deep inside of Jupiter's atmosphere? And how is it structured inside? What is the magnetic field like? And is there a core in the middle of it? If you wanted to pick, aside from the sun, the scariest environment we know of to send a spacecraft to, <laughs> Jupiter would be the place to go because Jupiter has this gigantic magnetic field which traps a lot of charged particles that get accelerated along the magnetic field lines. It builds up this huge radiation field. If we were to leave our spacecraft bathing in that radiation, it's just not designed to deal with that. So we're going to go through the radiation belts to get into orbit, and then we'll be going in and out of the radiation belts as we do our science phase. From an engineering standpoint, the radiation environment at Jupiter can be damaging to the electronics, just like a radiation environment could be damaging to your cells. So to protect the electronics, we bury them inside what we call the electronics vault, which is a box of titanium, about a third of an inch thick, which is about yay big, it's pretty big, that we have our computer and all of those things inside, tucked up under our high gain antenna. There's two types of radiation we worry about. One is when we fly through the radiation belt, we get an instantaneous exposure, we call that flux. The other is flying through the radiation belt again and again and again gives us something about accumulation, we call that dose. And so in the beginning of the mission we fly largely close to the planet underneath this kind of flat donut shaped radiation belt and then we fly around it. But eventually we fly more and more through the belts and our radiation levels every orbit get worse and worse and worse. We get over 80 percent of radiation exposure in the last half of the mission. Juno operates using solar power. We're the farthest mission ever to do that. Uh, no one's ever operated a solar powered spacecraft at Jupiter before. But there's a lot of things we had to consider when we developed those solar panels. First of all, the sunlight intensity at Jupiter is only 4% of that you'd receive at Earth. So we designed the arrays to be big enough to give us 500 watts of power despite that very low level of sunlight. Basically, the interior of Jupiter is nearly unexplored. What we see when we look at Jupiter and all the great amazing stuff we've discovered about Jupiter is about the moons that orbit the planet, it's about the atmosphere and the enormous weather systems and the great red spot and belts and zones, you know, stripes across the planet, all kinds of really cool, interesting, exciting stuff, but it's kind of skin deep. When we look at Jupiter, we're going, you know, a percent or two of the way down into the planet. That's what we're really seeing. Everything else about Jupiter, the deep interior of Jupiter, is nearly completely unknown. That's what we're trying to learn about. Because Jupiter's so large, it's changed relatively little since the beginning. It takes a lot to change Jupiter because it's so big. You drop a comet into Jupiter, it just kind of disappears inside, and you haven't really done much to the planet. So Jupiter remains, in a way, pristine. Now, it's gone through some internal changes and so forth, but it's nothing like, say, looking at the Earth and trying to figure out what the Earth was like four billion years ago. For Jupiter, the changes have been a lot smaller compared to the, just the sheer size of the planet.
ignition and liftoff of the Atlas V with Juno on a trek to Jupiter, a planetary piece of the puzzle on the beginning of our solar system.